So I have always been a Nintendo fanboy. Ever since I was small, it began with the NES, went on to the Game Boy, SNES, N64, and basically everything for their own. I didn't get into PlayStation really until PlayStation 2, and it was kind of late on in the life cycle of the PlayStation 2, and later the PlayStation 3, 4, and 5, and everything like that. So in this video, I'm going to modify a Japanese PlayStation 1 that I recently acquired, and let's see what fun I can have. So this is a PlayStation 1 that I've recently acquired through a group on Facebook that I'm part of. Now it's Japanese which means I have no means to power it, I have no Japanese games so I have no means to play anything, I want to get rid of the component cable, replace it with HDMI and maybe update it to Bluetooth. But before we get started I'd like to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. So whether you're a tinkerer like me or a hobbyist in general or even like a professional engineer and you need something big for your next project. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for high-quality, affordable PCBs and a lot more now. PCBWay specializes in precision PCB prototyping starting for just five bucks, but that is not all. They also offer services for small runs or full-scale productions, complete with component sourcing and soldering, so no matter how complex your design is, they've got you covered. PCBWay also offer 3D printing and CNC machining services which allows you to create such things as like enclosures, mechanical parts or even custom designs with materials like resin, metal or plastic. So if you need your project done fast, PCBWay has a lightning fast turnaround times with prototypes ready in as little as 24 hours. So join thousands of creators and engineers who trust PCBWay. Visit the link in the description down below and let's get stuck into this video. So the first thing we're going to work on is powering this thing. So I'm going to take this PSU, this PS1, PSU I think it's called, and convert this to a USB-C input. Next up is going to be the HDMI, so we'll get that component cable gone, get some HDMI glory, and then we're going to use this PSIO SD card reader mod to play some games. So this is going to eliminate me having to buy some Japanese games. And then lastly, we're going to install a Bluetooth ESP32 board so I can use my PlayStation 4 controller with this console. So the first thing we're going to do here is with this PS1 PSU I'm going to just disconnect the battle jack here and we're going to tin the wires and attach the the 9 volt trigger board to the end and this is going to give us the USB-C power. So this is pretty straightforward, there's nothing too complicated here. The one thing I absolutely love about this mod, and it was the same with the Dreamcast, is it's just a plug and play, it's just drop it in and you're good to go. To take out the original PSU there are two screws and one cable. So once those come out the board just practically lifts out, be careful for the capacitors and all that jazz. And again, this PS1 PSU, this just drops in. So I'm going to fasten in the 3D printed bracket for the 9 volt trigger board. And then everything just basically fits in. Absolutely glorious. Give it a quick test here just to make sure it does power on and no blow up. And we're good to go. So I ended up using the component into my uh, upscaler here just to kind of make sure everything boots up and as you can see it's absolutely fantastic. And I did want to test the disc reader, the laser, just to make sure everything worked. And I'm happy to say everything booted up as it should. So at least I do have the option to run Japanese discs as well as some of the ROMs off of the SD card. I don't know, it looks like it says shampoo, but I don't know. So the first big mod I'm going to do is actually the HDMI. Now with this high speed idle, it's only compatible with two versions of the motherboard, the PU18 and PU20. So luckily this is a PU20 that I have. If you go to the link down below where you can order the thing, it's got installation guides here. I followed all of this and it did take a wee while for me to kind of get up and running because this was... This was very complicated, like it's very, very hard soldering for me. And I wouldn't really attempt this if you're a, a beginner because it's tiny, tiny, as you'll see in a second. But the first thing we have to do is remove the 
whatever this port is. I can't remember what this port is. Comment down below if you know what port this is. So once that's removed, this is basically to make space for the HDMI port that we're going to plug in. So the first big thing is we're going to install some insulation tape just to kind of make sure there are no shorts or anything like that. And then it comes down then to soldering in the ribbon cable. Now, one kind of tip that I found online was not applying any extra solder, so nothing to the tip of the iron, just leaving it kind of, leaving it bare, uh, a wee bit of flux, and then just running the pins over it, and there should be enough flux on the pins already on the board to attach the, the ribbon cable to the board. So that's what I done. It did take a wee bit of trial and error with bridging pins and everything like that, but I got there eventually, just plenty of flux and taking your time. The next thing then was soldering the audio cable and then the controller cable. So this was only the three pins. This was straightforward enough compared to the main ribbon cable and the, the controller pins then are just four wires that attach the, the back of the controller port into the, the ribbon cable. And then once that was kind of up and running, I just kind of done a quick test just to make sure everything kind of powered on. Like I said, it did take me a few tries, you know, through the power to edit and it makes it look like I've done it all, everything first try. So that's bullsh. I never, it took me, it took me a fair, a fair few attempts and my soldering, my soldering is decent, but I think even then this was still pushing. Some capped on tape there just to kind of keep everything in place because I, had visions of this thing ripping off and wrecking the whole thing, but thankfully, thankfully never. So I've got the HDMI installed and the USB-C mod installed. So the next thing we're going to install now is the PSIO switchboard. This was a wee bit tricky because there was some masking that needed removing and also you had to cut some of the traces on the board as well. So this was this was scary because if it slipped and I ended up cutting the wrong traces it was going to be an absolute headache to repair. I'm going to throw the links and everything down below for everything that I followed to install this. But when I got installed and I tested it, it kept failing to boot and when I researched online, a lot of people were basically saying, make sure the traces are cut because that's the main issue. I eventually got to a point where I felt like I was kind of sawn through the board. So I ended up digging under the trace and lifting it up. And then that basically 100% made sure that there was no connection for the, the trace to the via here. So do whatever way you feel, com feel comfortable, but one of the big things for it failing was because the traces weren't cut properly. So just when you're installing this, just make sure that you're you're getting a decent cut. So once the solder mask was removed, it was just a case of applying some flux, some solder, getting a wee bit of a blob there, and it was enough to attach the wire. Again, it was Kiner wire that they recommend, which is like very, very thin wire. It did come with some, but I didn't like it. So I ended up using the one that I've used in the past so i ended up going with that and i i think that's worked out a little better so this is the last trace to cut again now this is specific to the PU20 board that I have. Um, th this can be installed in I think pretty much any version, it's just different. The points you need to solder and the traces you need to cut where they are on the board. But this here was a kind of prime example of making sure that it was cut because I kind of left it at that and it never, it never booted. It kept failing to boot and then it wasn't until I kind of looked at that one, dug up the trace and then completely severed the, the, the connection, then it started booting up and everything was fine.
So the diagram, I'll throw out links and everything down below like I say, but the, di the diagram's straightforward enough to follow. Um, there's only kind of one thing that I didn't really kind of see mentioned anywhere and I was only kind of on Reddit that I came across it was there's the, the VCC in, so the power in. There's a pad on the switchboard that looks like that's where it solders to, but that is not where it solders to. It basically solders to the other side of the diode next to the pad. So do not solder it to the pad, solder it to the opposite end of the diode. So I'm going to assemble the board quickly now just to kind of see how everything works. And again, through the power of editing, it looks like everything worked first try. It did not. I was doing this for about nine hours and installing this HDMI took about three hours and installing this PSIO took about an hour. I ended up booting it up quickly just to give it a test. Plugged in the PSIO in the back here. And as you can see, it's running absolutely perfectly. The HDMI on this small screen looks fantastic. And all the options you have as well are great. But this wee screen is all well and good. We'll cut to some proper footage here now. And you can see what this thing really looks like on a large scale. So, apart from the kind of jagged edges and everything like that, it's what to be expected, it's not upscaling it, it's just making it all look smooth. There's plenty of options on the high speed idle, high speed idle, high speed idle, I don't know what um, interface for you to kind of tinker around with. Some, um, interlacing -ish, some interlacing options as well as scan lines and basically if you want it darker or brighter, which is what I kind of follow the way most the video mode rather. It says dynamic which is dark and then normal which is normal and then mild which is brighter. So I ended up kind of, I kind of left it in mild because I found dynamic being a wee bit too dark but um, it still looks amazing. It actually looks like how it looks like on an emulator I feel. So I'm more, more than delighted with this. In the high, in high speed idle HDMI thing only costs like 50 quid which is amazing. So Overall, delighted with the PSIO, the USB-C, and the HDMI. But one thing I want to get ready now is this controller. I like this controller, but it's not the best. It's kind of small, and I didn't want to get carpal tunnel playing PlayStation 1. So I'm going to install this ESP32 board, and we're going to add some Bluetooth to the controllers. So to piece this kind of mod together, I ended up taking a diagram for Mundo's website, Mundo Yakara. I'll throw a link down below, and also the diagram for the PlayStation 1 uh, for consoles unleashed. And I basically just slapped them over each other, and basically everything just kind of lines up. The the ground and the 3 volt I ended up just plugging straight into the ESP32, and that's going to give us power to the board. So I kind of coloured all the all the wires here just to kind of make sure I kind of knew what was going where and I only wired up the 
first port because I didn't really see the need in adding the second one because it'll just be mostly first player anyway. So let's get this thing wired then and we'll see how we get on. So this is it wired up now, so I'm just going to give it a, a quick placement, plug it in and just kind of make sure it works. Now don't do what I done. So I initially wired it into the the 5 volt of the SP32, but it's no, it's the 3 volt. So just make sure you didn't make the same mistake I did. So we're booting the thing up now and we'll pair the controller. And as you can see here, it's paired happy days. So now this is going to give us the Bluetooth controller functionality now and give this PS1 a wee bit more of a modern taste. Here we go. Three less. And I actually kind of get over how good this HDMI looks. Like, I think it legit looks like it would look like on an emulator, which is absolutely insane. And adding the scan lines, whoa, I love adding the thin ones. The thick ones I think are a bit much, but I just find it so, so clear. So now that's done, everything's buttoned up and I am absolutely delighted with how it turned out in the end. I've got a couple of wee bits here now to add the final touches, one of which is this Raspberry Pi 2040 memory card. So this is the this is based on the, the Pico Mem card build over on GitHub and this space has an SD card that lets you run loads of different uh, memory card images off of it, so infinite memory cards. And the original PSIO came with like a small sticker that you stuck to the bottom that says PSI modded. Now because this was a clone, I liked the idea of this and this sticker never came with it. So I ended up designing my own. I thought it had a wee bit of a cool flourish and just kind of list all the mods that are inside the PlayStation. Guys, I'm going to get this thing plugged in and I'm going to play some PlayStation. This build has been absolutely fantastic. If you've done something similar, please let me know down below. Please comment, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Speedy though.